The Flash was first announced in 2014, where it was stuck in development hell for almost 10 years. It suffered many production problems, involving numerous directors either leaving the project or being fired, dozens of scripts that were either thrown out or reworked, and the fact that the main actor of the movie is an insane queer criminal, who turned out to be such a problem that Warner Brothers banned him from giving interviews for his own movie. And when I say that Ezra Miller is insane, I'm not joking, the guy is fucking nuts. The first thing he did was strangle a pregnant woman. Did you want to fight? Is that the deal? Whoa, bro, 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 bro. Then uploaded a video where he threatened the KKK. This is a message for the Beulahville chapter of the North Carolina Ku Klux Klan. I suggest just killing yourselves with your own guns got arrested in Hawaii for attacking several people at a karaoke bar, for which he only received a $500 fine. I'm transgender and I'm binary and I don't want to be searched by a man. I claim my Fourth Amendment rights. Afterwards, he was arrested again and charged with second-degree assault on a 26-year-old woman that he threw a chair at and cut her forehead. The reason why he did this was because he became irritated when he was asked to leave. He was later released as an investigation is still ongoing. Not long afterwards, he allegedly went on to groom several children and start a cult, then burgled a home in Vermont where he stole some alcohol. He was arrested for the third time, but only charged with trespassing and given a light sentence of serving one year on probation. Not a single one of us would have gotten away with half the crimes he committed. Now, does anyone else find it funny just how ironic this situation is? Ezra Miller is a known criminal who is allowed to get away with committing crimes just for the simple fact that he plays a superhero on the big screen. <laughs> how ironic. And the amount of lies that everyone around this movie has told. The director, Andy Muschietti, has said that there is nobody else he could imagine playing Flash. <laughs> oh, wait, you serious? Let me laugh even harder. <laughs> Ezra Miller is the worst thing in this movie by far, and when he meets his younger self, the film makes you want to reach through the screen and slap the fucking pair of them. And he wasn't the only one who was lying. James Gunn said that The Flash is one of the best superhero movies he's ever seen. You're a liar! You're a liar! The Flash is not a good movie. In fact, the movie is a fucking mess. It feels like several scripts that were smashed together, and because of that, the narrative doesn't flow naturally like a cohesive story would. For example, in the beginning of the movie, we can see that the Flash has a calorie watch that shows how much energy he has left. It also shows us that he loses speed whenever he is hungry. Now, normally you would think that this would pay off later in the movie, but it's never brought up again. Sure, we see Ezra stuff his face a few times in the film, but the calorie watch or the speed reduction is forgotten about. And let's not talk about the god-fucking-awful CGI. I don't know how they done it, but this $300 million movie has the worst CGI I have ever seen. It's so fucking terrible that it makes the effects on She-Hulk look good. I mean, look at how he runs. Forrest Gump can run better than him. So after the movie came out, everyone has gone on Twitter and slammed the film for looking hideous. This response has made Andy Muschietti come out, and he has tried to justify the effects by saying, The idea, of course, is that we are in the perspective of the Flash. Everything is distorted in terms of light and textures. What a load of bollocks. Anyone can see that this is just cope for the fact that everyone is taking the piss out of the shit movie. The music in this movie makes it feel like we are listening to the director's playlist rather than the music tying into the story. It feels like it was just randomly thrown in. Moving on, the movie is way too long, clocking in at 2 hours and 35 minutes. And because of this, it's an entire hour before we can even see Michael Keaton. So for almost half the movie, we are forcibly stuck with two Ezra Millers. There are plenty of scenes in the first hour of this movie that should have been cut out entirely. There is a big action scene in the beginning that doesn't factor into the narrative at all. It's completely disposable. Not just that, there is also the inclusion of blackwashed Iris West, who is such a non-entity in this movie that I wondered why the fuck is this character even in this film? She only interacts with Ezra three times in the movie in very short, brief scenes that don't mean anything. She too should have been left on the cutting room floor. 
Another point I wanted to make is that everyone in this movie is a killer. Now I'm fine with Michael Keaton's Batman killing people, it's what he did in the 89 movie. The same goes for Supergirl, she wasn't raised by the Kents and has been experimented on for most of her life so she wouldn't have the same morality that Superman did. My problem is with the Flash, who is definitely a killer. There is a particular scene where one guard spots the group in a Siberian base and the Flash going about Mach 10 throws the guy into the wall. Ah, there goes that MURDERER! You got away with murder! Now for all the negatives, there are some positives to this movie. The first is Michael Keaton, who is the best thing in it, especially the first scene we see him in, and that's him kicking the absolute shit out of Ezra Miller. Unfortunately for him, he was massively underused and has no real arc in this movie. I and probably everyone else who watched this movie would have preferred to have seen a solo Batman movie instead of The Flash. The way he was written was pretty bad as well. One moment, they ask him to help save the entire world, and he just says no. Why? He doesn't help because he just doesn't want to anymore, but luckily for them, five minutes later, he changes his mind. Next up, we have Latina Cara zor who despite being in tons of the marketing, is barely in the movie. And surprisingly, she wasn't annoying and isn't a Mary Sue. The problem though, is just like Michael Keaton, she was also massively underused and has a rushed arc. At first she hates humans for experimenting on her, but five minutes later, after seeing Zod shoot a bunch of random people, she suddenly is willing to save everyone. That's fucking stupid. Another positive I will say is that they have blended the two Barrys on screen together very well and seem to have done a good job transplanting Ezra Miller's face on another actor. It's the only time the effects in this movie were actually put to good use. Well, with all that said and done, I'm going to dive right into the fucking mess that is the plot. The film opens with an unnecessary action scene where we see the Flash rescue a bunch of poorly rendered babies from a collapsing hospital ward. As he is doing this, he tells Alfred that he feels unappreciated by the Justice League, calling himself the janitor of the group. This setup does not get paid off and is never mentioned again. We then see Batman who is chasing the Falcones as they have stolen a virus that can pollute the water. He falls off the bridge but is saved by Wonder Woman and her lasso of truth. Now it's here that the movie decides to make fun of Batman by having him say stupid shit, such as being Batman doesn't actually solve any crimes, and that if Batman truly wanted to get rid of crime, then he should just give all of his money away. <sighs> now what these retards forget is that Bruce Wayne gives away tons of money every year to charities. But what help is free money really, if every aspect of your city is corrupt? The best case scenario is that the money is pocketed by corrupt officials, and the worst case is that it ends up funding the very criminals he is trying to stop. So after this, the story actually begins, and we see a flashback to when Barry's mother was murdered. She was alone at home, as his father was at the store getting a can of tomatoes. Unfortunately, when he got home, he was arrested for the murder of his wife. Back to the future! We see Barry trying to prove his dad's innocence. He is examining old security footage that shows his dad was at the store when the murder happened. But the problem is that his head is down the entire time, so his face is invisible to the camera, making the evidence useless. Later that night, Barry has a talk with Bruce about him being able to change the past. Bruce warns against this, saying that it's their worst moments, their scars are what make them who they are. Remember this point, as it will become important later on. Barry ends up ignoring Bruce's advice and goes fuck it. He travels back to the past and stops his dad from leaving the house, and because of this the killer doesn't show up. With the job done, Barry tries to go back to the present, but ends up getting attacked by Black Flash and flung out of the Speed Force. He figures out what time he's in when he meets his younger self and it's before he got superpowers. Trying to avoid a paradox, he takes his younger, much more annoying self to the lab where he got superpowers. Unfortunately, when he gets hit by lightning, the original Flash loses his powers as his younger self gets them. Unsure of how he's going to get back to the present, they are interrupted by a broadcast from Zod who has turned up to Earth looking for the Codex. Realising that this Earth has no Superman but a Batman, the two Barrys go on a search for him where they end up meeting Michael Keaton. He goes on to explain that Barry has travelled to another world, not another timeline. 
Afterwards, Barry tries to ask his help to save the world, but Batman says no, then five minutes later says yes. They realise Zod is looking for a Kryptonian, and Batman finds out that the Kryptonian is being held in Siberia, but when they break into the base, it's not Clark, but Kara they find. Strangely, Kara has her full Supergirl uniform in the same cell they find her in. That's weird. So they escape and return to Wayne Manor, but Kara refuses to help them, then five minutes later she returns and says yes. Utterly meaningless. So the Discount Justice League have a final battle against Zod, but unfortunately Zod wins and kills both Kara and Batman. The younger Barry keeps going back in time repeatedly, trying to find a way to beat Zod, and every time he does, he fails and becomes more fucked up, with pieces sticking out of him. It then gets revealed that the Black Flash who attacked Barry earlier on was in fact a much older version of Barry who is constantly trying to find a way to beat Zod. Here's an idea, why not go back and recruit like a million different versions of yourself, then just overwhelm Zod with bodies alone. I sent wave after wave of my own men at them. That didn't take me 60 years to find out, it seems like an obvious solution if you keep duplicating yourself. Anyway, it turns out that the time-space continuum is collapsing, and we see a bunch of horrific cameos in CGI. They're not even the actors, it's just a shitty drawing of them. So the original Barry accepts the fact that no matter what he does, he cannot save his mother. He goes back to the store and returns the can to the shelf, letting his mother die. Unfortunately, the entire point of this ending is completely undermined, because when the Flash returns to the present, it's revealed that once more he fucked around with time. Fool! You've learned absolutely nothing! And made his father look up at the camera, now proving his innocence. Remember back to the beginning of the movie, when Ben Affleck said that the scars are what make us who we are, and that was the whole point of this story, that you can't change the worst moments that happen to you. Well, it turns out that Barry learnt absolutely nothing from this adventure, and once again fucks around with time. Now, because of this, he proves his father's innocence, but when he decides to meet up with Bruce Wayne, it's not Ben Affleck who shows up, but George Clooney. Why? What this means is that Barry never made it back to his original world, and now he is stuck in another universe. This ending is played out for laughs, except it's not a happy ending, but a fucking horror story. His real father is still in prison in the original universe. Imagine being Henry for a moment. You've been falsely imprisoned for your wife's murder, and while you were trapped inside prison, your son just disappeared one day without a trace. What exactly has Henry got to live for? At this point, it would not surprise me if he hung himself. Lastly, there is a post credit scene that confirms that Jason Momoa is in this timeline. I don't give a fuck. And with that, the movie ends. The Flash has proven to us once again that DC is completely fucked beyond repair. There is no way James Gunn can save this franchise, as they can't even give us one good superhero movie. Everything DC makes has turned into shit, and after almost a decade of trying, these retards still can't get it right. Even if by some miracle they were able to, I am no longer interested in this universe. And I could not give less of a fuck about the upcoming DC slate. It looks shit.